features of this app. Hello? Hello? Is it moving green? Yeah, it is. It is? Yeah. You see how it starts moving green? Oh, yeah. That means it's picking something up. Yeah, you should be okay. Let me take this one off. When do we start admitting them? I didn't start until the uh, presenter came in. Maybe like two minutes before. But we do. We go into present mode right away once we start sharing our screen, correct? Yes. But then how do you see the people that are coming in the room? I open the class, the chat, the participants. 
You know what I'm saying? I only have one person waiting. I have one person, two people waiting. Neither of them are your secrets? No. Mm -mm. Can you do that with a slide show in the working room? If I put it in present mode. Because that would be cool, right? Yes. Because then you really don't even have to. Because once you put once you once you put it in present mode, which I should be in present mode right now because people are coming in, right? Is that right? Gotcha. Good morning. Hi. Oh, 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 oh. No presenter yet. Who we're waiting on? Alice. Alice Kayla. Yeah. Let's see her here. Nope. Let's do a search for Alice. Thank you. Like, oh, what else? Right now, 19. Oh, 26. Just jump to 26. Let's go by Nope. So I know some of our going Miss, Mr. I don't see any nicknames. <laughs> Okay. 
I think I was going to my place with them. Oh my God. <laughs> No, I'm not. I have no. I have no presenter. Alice and Dennis just text her. Okay. But no, nothing yet. She is in Kansas, but she's at a different time schedule. So this might be soon. Yeah, she's not. If you leave just an A in there, everyone that has an A in their first name will always stay at the top. Oh, okay. It's a little tip and trick. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Thank you. Thanks. Did you just want me to say you have um actually you have a question or did you want me to Hey, if he gets here after, but then you start, I'll send you, um, I'll send you a, a, a private message or PC record for you to let you know. Oh, really? Oh, I think he's here. He's here. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Oh, my PC because he made it. Um, there's one person that has like, this, but I don't know who that is. Doesn't, but nothing, nothing even close to her at all. So if we go to the chat, can we just ask you know, Alice, are you, are you in the room? Just in case okay, she's so in there on her different name. Oops. Uh, sorry, Greg, you're going to be checking on the chat. So, uh, we're good. Okay, good luck, guys. You're welcome. Nancy says she's in Kansas, different time zone. Yeah, but she presented yesterday. She was on time. Nobody's responding in the chat under a different name. Mm -hmm. 35. Thirty-eight. Mm -hmm. Let me speak to them. For
Huh? Oh, sorry. That's my presenter didn't show up yet. The first session. Uh, good morning, everybody. This is uh, Dennis Large. So we are um, waiting on Alice. So our presenter is not here yet. So I just want to uh, give you an, uh, an option. Uh, you can stick around for uh, a while. We've, we've uh, reached out to Alice. Uh, so clearly, uh, you know, something is, is, is up or, or she would be here already. So if you want to stick around and give her a few more minutes to show up, or if you want to make a second choice and, and head to another session, we totally get that. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, we have a, a, a slight issue. So uh, Alice is not here uh, yet. So um, we are reaching out to her and, and hopefully everything's okay on her end. But we do want to, at this point, give you a choice. You can stick around for a couple more minutes um, uh, and hopefully she'll show up. Or uh, if you want to make a, a second choice, go to plan B and head over to another session. We certainly understand that. Uh, also, so you know, uh, she did the same session yesterday and it was recorded. We will be posting that. So you will get to see uh, Alice's session, just maybe not live this, this morning. Oh, thanks, June. Um, no, 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 no. There's still 25 people waiting in there, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's not really nothing else you can do, right? They'll hopefully switch over. Right. Yeah. We're 47 at one point, so a lot of them are. It's going down still. Yeah. They're going out. Okay. 
How do I know which headset is working, Moses? Oh, there, now she is. Now she's here. Alice just came in. How do I know if this is working for sure? Go to. Go ahead, say something. Good morning. It's not working right. I just like this one. Yeah, it's good. Oh, the top. There's only four people left. Oh, there's more. Yeah, yeah. I need to make that comments, right? The host. Are you sharing? Huh? Who's sharing? I was sharing. So should I? Your mic is still on. I don't know if you saw the chat, but we've been listening to everything. Yes. Thank you. So yes. Is our presenter here already? Alice. Hey. Hi. Good morning. So you should be able to take over now. Okay, cool. Get my. Are you able to share? Uh, uh, yes. Although last time I forgot to actually share, like a dope. And of course, no one says anything as I'm rambling on for ten minutes. Um. And anyway, I 
Yes, right? So I'm going to stop because that's not what I wanted to share. And if you do want to share, Now, that's what I want to share. Okay, there we go. And oh, we have a chat. Thank you. Hi, Alice. Hey, hey, how's it going? You are live and ready to start. I thought I'm not until 12. Nope, you were to start at um, actually 9.30. 9.30 this morning which it's uh, 944 uh, right now. That, okay, okay, that is, that is not the information I have. I'm sorry. Um, okay, I, uh, well, now I'm flustered. <laughs> okay, well, hello everybody, I'm Alice Keeler. I had down on my calendar that we were doing this in 15 minutes. Um, we're working on Google Classroom. So if you'll go to alicekill.com slash IE Google Camp 21. It makes you feel any better. We all, we all did it this year. <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, okay. Okay. <sighs> All right, so if you would, I put it in the chat, alicekill.com slash, oops, that's spelled incorrectly. Let's try this again. Uh, yes, the time zones are always throwing me off. I am in Kansas, but literally it is on my calendar right now for in, which you can't see that because of this, uh, it is on my calendar in 15 minutes. So I didn't mess up the time zone. I, it's just not on my calendar at the right time. I, I'm not sure how that happened. So this isn't how I wanna start things. Okay, so if you would go to alicekill.com slash IE Google Camp 21, I do have a Google form. It'll allow you anything that you put into that form will become my slides. So I'll be able to see down here. Is this screen sharing? I'm not screen sharing again. I'm just gonna go back to bed. Is I am screen sharing. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, we can see it. it. Says Google Classroom with Alice Keeler. Okay, I use Google Meet, so this is uh, I can't tell what I'm doing. Uh, so you yeah. are share, you are sharing. You're just not in uh, present mode. Yes, I don't want to be in present mode. Am okay, I good? then you're fine. So I have uh, my slides are in file published to the web so that I can switch tabs. And so you're seeing my whole screen. You are going to alicekill.com slash IE Google Camp 21. And I want to know what do you wish you could do with Google Classroom? So I code 
my code Google App Script, and that allows me to add on functionality and different things for Google Classroom. So today I'm going to show you some things that you can do with Google Classroom, and hopefully you don't know all of them. And then for some of these things that you wish you could do, I have I would like to try and make some solutions for you. So as you add your slide, just by filling out the Google form, it will add into there. So you could put in a a tip for Google Classroom, you could put in a wish for Google Classroom or any kind of a comment or question. Uh, go ahead and use that. Okay, if it's not working, do something different. This is by the Ginger Lumen, who is a fellow Kansan. I moved to Kansas last year. COVID just made life crazy and suddenly I'm in Kansas. Um, the weather is weird. I, I like to say it's weather roulette. So yesterday was just beautiful all day. And then just all of a sudden it just started raining down buckets while we were sitting outside. Um, but I did just move from Fresno, California. So it was a little bit different for me. But I love Ginger because how do we, we should be always willing to do something different. Why beat our chest and say, the kids aren't turning in work, they're not doing this, if year after year it's the same story. Like, how do we know what we need to change? So I'm a big believer that uh, data is not a four letter word, it's old data that's a four letter word, is when we're sitting around in a presentation or in a meeting, and that meeting says, uh, here's a last year's state testing data or two units ago test. I'm like, I've already done that. I have all the data. I actually talk and interact with my kids and I should be using that to constantly adjust what I do. That's the value of a really great teacher. I am a math teacher. I teach high school math. I do that part-time and then I code part-time for this company, Schoolletics. So today I'm gonna to show you mostly Google Classroom and then just spend about five minutes showing you some ways that you can go a little bit further using Schoolytics. Uh, you can find my books at alicekeeler.com slash books, including my new book, uh, Teaching with Google Jamboard. And I do have a, whoops. I can't apparently do anything today. I do have a jam. And I would love to have you join it. Now this, I'm intentionally left it this way. This is from my session yesterday. So I, I'm sure you know this, but I would like to demonstrate how I can go to see version history. And I'm gonna rewind this back to the way it was before everybody participated yesterday. And the reason I wanna show you that is because this is how I run my classrooms. I don't make six copies of the same jam or six copies of the same slides, but I do wanna be interactive all the time with my students. So version history lets me just, you know, wipe it clean, go to the next one and I can name the versions. So if you would just on this first, if you would join it, put the link in the chat, add a sticky note with your name, it would be awesome. And I'm gonna to go to the version history and I can name this one, day one, Google Camp. So it's really easy. I can get right back to seeing, there we are, thanks Charlotte. I can, you can add a sticky note right here on the left-hand side. There is an icon that allows it to pop up and you can add a new note and you can stretch and move it around. But even if tomorrow I wanted to go back and look at what all the great inputs and tips and things were from the first group, that is no problem because I can go right back to the version history and see what happened first period versus second period and still be all in the same doc. Ah, here we go. Charlotte, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Michael, thank you. Appreciate you popping in. So it's one of my tricks when using Jamboard is I want students to participate in using Google Classroom is not about just putting your stuff online. When we go, when we use online tools, we have to put extra effort into thinking about how do I really get students to be active participants and active participation is not note taking, right? So what I'll do is I have them put their, their sticky notes and then I will make them large as I'm displaying it either through a Google Meet or in person. Mia, thanks for being here. Appreciate you participating. Thank you, everybody. Now we're gonna click on right the top center. It has the frame bar. I'm gonna expand that out and you can see that you can move to your different frames. You can call them pages or slides. It's, it's technically frames. 
Uh, since I put all this effort into writing this book on Jamboard, I have gotten into the habit of calling them frames, but I still sometimes find myself slipping into calling them slides. It really doesn't matter. So you can switch here. So here's a fun tip when you're using Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, Google, all of these things, is if you click on, you can see I have 16 people here in my Google Jamboard. And when you click on any of those, it'll jump you to the frame that they're on. So if you can find my picture in the participant list, you'll jump right to the one that I'm on. So the second frame, if you would give me your favorite classroom Google tip. Now I'm gonna copy the link up at the top of Jamboard, go to the second frame. Okay, great. And uh, if you would like to add your favorite Google Classroom tip, we can leave this as a resource for everyone to review afterwards and to get some of your different tips. My favorite tip is that you wanna number all of your assignments with a three digit number and the hashtag. The hashtag is super important. What the hashtag lets you do is search your Google Drive and search your Gmail. When you put in hashtag 001, what comes up? Only things that are assignment number one. If I put in a one, what has a one in it? Like seriously everything. And so the hashtag is really important so that it helps you to find assignments a lot faster. This is my bestest best tip. Now I am on frame two and I copied the link at the top of frame two and I put that into the chat. And what you'll notice is that if you click on that link, it'll take you right to this frame, take you right to this frame. If you wanna add a sticky note, look on the middle of the sidebar, the, bar, the toolbar on the left, and you can add a sticky note, a new one if you have a tip that you would like to share. Now, since we got a late start on this and I apologize, I had the wrong time. Um, I'm gonna move forward a little bit. You can absolutely schedule a post and coming soon is the ability to uh, schedule multiple classes. So you can schedule first period and sixth period at a different time and to do that easier. So thank you for that, All right? Um, yes, good note taking. Also, if you use Google Keep, I love using Google Keep for PD and I use a specific color for any time I'm in a professional development training so I can get all those resources and links back up quickly. If you move over to frame three, what are some third party products that work really well with Google Classroom? Something I've been using a lot recently is Moat. I love Moat.com. It allows you to add voice comments. So if you'd like to on frame three, share some tools that you think the group would benefit from. That would be awesome. Okay, share a tool here that works with Google Classroom. Okay, but I'm actually just gonna move on since we are uh, shorter on time and I apologize for that. Okay. Oh. I am assuming you are all Google Classroom users. You know how to create an assignment, how to put work in there, to find student work and to assess student work using Google Classroom. So what I want to talk to you about today is some ways to look at some of the data that you can get in Google Classroom to take it further, to say, is this working? Do I need to make adjustments? So the age old question who turned in work. So when you go to classroom.google.com, right at the top underneath the logo, it has to do, route to review and calendar. And the to review is for the teacher. Now they keep changing what this is called. It was originally called your work a long time ago. And then they've a couple of iterations later have it as to review to let you know what list of assignments students have submitted. So you can click right on there from the class tiles page. However, I don't know about you, but I have a lot of assignments and I have a lot of students and that to review page is very slow to load. It's loading up all the assignments from all of my classes. So here's my hack. When you open up your individual class, you're looking at the stream. You're looking at the stream of Google Classroom and over on the left-hand side, it says upcoming and it tells you things that are due within the next week. Now, I never thought to click on this for years and all of a sudden I clicked on it on accident. When you click on view all, you click on view all in that upcoming bubble and it is actually gonna take you to the to do your work page 
we can review if students need to do, have submitted work, uh, but it filters it for that class. So it loads up a lot faster. I do view all, I see that list and it looks like this. So it says these are the assignments that you have assigned to your student and it gives it to you in a really nice strip view and it says zero turned in, three assigned, two are graded. I am all about shortening the gap how long until students submits work and they get feedback? The longer the gap, the less they care. So one of the paradigm shifts for using a tool like Google Classroom is I don't have to wait till everybody turns it in. So I wanna check this often. My goal, my goal is to have zeros across the board. Zero turned in, zero turned in, zero turned in. So right now this is like a homing beacon for me, like what? Two people have turned in assignment number three where again, you can see that I use the hashtag and the three digit number to make it real easy for me to identify my assignments. I'm very consistent about that. That is my bestest, best tip. Number all of your assignments with a three digit number and a hashtag. And so I click on that too, but I don't just click on that too. I hold down the control key when I click on that too, because it's gonna pop up that assignment in a separate tab. It does take a little while for the to-do page, to, the to review page. They've changed it multiple times. It was called to do at one point. The to review page, it takes a few minutes for it to load sometimes. So I don't wanna wait for it to load again. So my trick is I basically just always hold down the control key. No matter what I'm clicking on in classroom, I hold down control. Control causes it to open in a new tab. It opens in a new tab. So I'm gonna open up these in a new tab. And actually what I'll do is I'll usually hold down control and anything that's not zero turned in, control click, 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 and they open up in different tabs. So I'll have four or five tabs loading and opening of things that students have submitted. So I can go in and give that feedback and return. Google Classroom is designed to return everything. Return, return, return. If you don't return it, they don't get their score released. And if you have any in-document comments, they won't see them. Those, those comments are invisible. Initially, students are owners and editors of their own work. And when they turn it in, you become the owner editor and they become a viewer. Viewers cannot see in document comments and that's true on docs, sheets and slides. So you wanna return it so they can see any comments that you left them in the document. It releases their score and it also lets me know, woo, Alice, you are caught up. So when I have zeros under turned in, zero, 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 I know that I have looked at everything that I need to look at. So that really helps hold me accountable and it shortens that gap that I don't have to wait for everyone in order to provide feedback. Okay, any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Don't be afraid to undo the microphone and ask a question. You can also use that Google form that I gave you at the beginning. It is alicekeela.com slash IE Google Camp 21. And that will allow you to add your question for those to show up at the end. You can export grades to Google Sheets. Now, one of the things that I'm really into is grading reform. I want standards-based grading. I love rubric scores. When you put a score in something, students hyper-focus on the score and all but ignore your feedback. So I don't put grades into Google Classroom. I use rubric scores. But regardless of how you use Google Classroom, you can get a spreadsheet that shows you all of the scores that you've entered in there, be they rubric scores or otherwise. Open up any assignment, open any assignment, and you're gonna see this settings cog in the upper right-hand corner. And when you click on that settings cog, it's gonna give you the option to copy all grades to Google Sheets. You're gonna copy all grades to Google Sheets, and it will export out pop out a Google Sheet spreadsheet that now gives you a lot more control over how you wanna sort, filter, and organize. You could use that spreadsheet with Autocrat to create your own custom progress reports. I'm gonna put that into the chat, Autocrat add-on. So if you're not a user of the Autocrat add-on, it is an add-on for Google Sheets. So you just want, it's free. So you wanna go ahead and install Autocrat into your Google Sheets add-on menu. And then, you know, it, it's a copy, right? It copies all grades. So anything you change, edit, modify in that spreadsheet will not reflect back in Google Classroom. So you can sort it by 
score. You can delete out the students who you're not concerned about and like, okay, I have these five students I want to focus on. And so you can just delete out the other rows and sort, filter, organize all of those assignments that you can see. These are the ones you're missing. These are the ones that I want you to focus on and create uh, data reports from there. Any questions about the export to Google Sheets? No? Okay. And then there's the grades tab. So you will log into Google Classroom. You see the first tab that you're taken to is the stream. And then you go to the classwork tab, which is designed to be organized by topics. Uh, the people tab and then the grades tab now if you have a lot of assignments this is going to load really slowly so one of my tips is i create a new google classroom every unit every unit or every grading period i highly highly recommend you create a new google classroom every unit and i know some of you are thinking alice you are crazy i usually can talk you into it um maybe we have to go get a cup of coffee and, and discuss through it but I really is one of my favorite tips. When I'm done with unit seven, I archive unit seven. So that shuts it down. They're no longer loading assignments every time. My to review list doesn't load all the old assignments. My stream doesn't load all the assignments. My classwork tab doesn't load all the assignments and the grades tab doesn't load all the assignments. So everything runs faster. That's the first thing. When you wanna reuse assignments, Next year, you're in unit eight. Do you want to scroll past units one, two, three, four, five, six, seven's assignments so you can reuse an assignment? If I'm in unit eight, I'd like to reuse assignments, reuse post from unit eight. So it makes it a lot easier to reuse assignments. And then it is also easier to just find and grade things. And so I highly encourage you to do this. I have some other tips on why I do it. But uh, when you go to the grades tab, you of course can see a whole grade. Now you are going to, excuse me, the whole class with all these uh, assignments. Hold down the control key, hold down the control key as you click on any of these. When I click on pretty much on view assignment, on any student's name, on anything, I usually will hold down the control key as I click on it so that it opens in a new tab and I don't have to reload what I had already just waited to load. So that is one of my tips, right? So that's an, that is a place that we can get information. It's obviously from the grades tab. Now coming soon, I have beta access to this is the new activity tab, the new activity tab. Now this is for teachers and not students. And this is gonna show you when's the last time they had some sort of activity. Logging in does not count as an activity. They have to do something leave a comment somewhere, submit something, they have to do something. So for this reason, every day I create, add a question, I'm gonna say, are you here today? And I do not make it a warm up question. When students have low self-efficacy, if they don't feel confident, they will choose not to do nothing, right? They don't submit their work, which ruins my attendance and it ruins my, hey, did you log in? So I literally just ask, did you log in today? Are you in person? Are you remote? Are you tardy? All the, what are all the different ways a student might be participating that day? And I say, are you absent? And even if they're absent, I ask them to either log in during class time if they're able to and indicate that they're absent or maybe tomorrow, let me know. So I have this attendance record. So I go to the classwork page, I create a question and I make it multiple choice just so I can get some activity every day. Now at a bare minimum, you don't have to do anything academic, just let me know that you have logged in. So I can get that nice activity so I can see that they logged in, that they what they've submitted and what their last comments are. And if you can see from this screenshot, and I'm gonna go ahead and link you to the, oh, Charlotte, I answered that question one second. This link links you to this slide in my presentation because I know that the screenshot is a little bit small. You can sort any of these columns. It defaults to being sorted alphabetically, which seems a little silly to me. I don't look at student uh, activity usually by alphabetically. So if I click on the arrow next to last activity date, I can sort it uh, recent, most recent at the top or I can sort it by last submission, or I can sort it by last comment. And that really helps me to more quickly interact with students. And this has, I've had this for maybe a week, and this is just my daily go-to. And now I'm finding myself, it's just so nice to click on that activity tab, have they turned anything in? And again, I always hold down the control key when I click on anything on here 
so that when I go to respond to this private comment that the student left, that I don't have to reload the activity tab. Charlotte, they absolutely get a new link every unit and it's really easy. This new uh, feature where we can share Google Classrooms with a link has been a game changer for me. So I simply create a new class. I click the settings cog and I get, I copy the link to the new class and in unit seven, so I'm making unit eight, in the old unit, unit seven, I just make an assignment that says join unit eight. And unit eight is where I put the daily attendance question and everyone join, it's, I did it all year, it works pretty dang good. Uh, you can also go to, here's my trick. I open any assignment, open any assignment. I click on that settings cog in the upper right where I can copy all grades to Google Sheets and not because I want to copy the grades, I want the email addresses. So that gives me a roster of the students' names and the email addresses. So if you ever just want a list of student names, the trick is to copy all grades to Google Sheets and you can grab that. So I just highlight all of the email addresses off of that spreadsheet. Could somebody put in the chat what time we're done today since obviously my calendar was very off. Um, I'm sorry, are you showing us or are you telling us? Because we're still on the activity page. Yes, ma'am, I'm just telling you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was answering a question, so I don't have a pre-prepared slide for that. So if, if you do, I'll go backwards. No, I got it. I just wasn't sure because I know you're like super rushed and I, so I, I was, I was I, trying to be helpful. I apologize I if it know. didn't sound helpful. <laughs> and I got my coffee and then then this is gonna hopefully not ruin my entire day because normally I, I was prepared friends I really was 1020 okay All right and of course I'm in Kansas so we're gonna go with 1220 appreciate that so it's clicking on that uh, cog to copy all grades to Google Sheets not only gives me all the data of students turning in work it also just gives me a list of their email addresses so if you highlight their email addresses if you highlight their email addresses, copy, you can paste the whole group at once. Now, there is no right answer. Whichever way you do it, you'll wish you did the other one. I put all six of my classes into the same Google Classroom. I don't do period one, period two, period three. Pick your poison. Uh, like I said, there's no right answer, but that's my choice. So I have 140 students that I need to move from unit seven to unit eight but I don't have to copy paste their email addresses one at a time. You can actually do the whole thing, like all 140 of them, just highlight that column of student email addresses and paste it onto the people tab where you invite them. And then for the most part, they just join right in. And of course in unit seven, I do give the link to unit eight. It is pretty seamless. Even the first time I did it, I had very little issues. I have a couple of kids I would go over and I'm like, hey, can you join the new class? Other than that was, was no problem. I'm really excited about this new activity tab. You won't see it yet, but hopefully it'll be there for the fall. I'm doing the beta testing, very excited. And so I have, let me get this link here, a Google Classroom. If you have never experienced Google Classroom as a student, let me invite you to this. It's just gonna be very light just giving you some examples and tips for Google Classroom. Even if you know how to use Google Classroom and even if you've used it as a student, I hope I have at least one thing for you that is valuable. Skip anything that you don't wanna do and I'll just be posting a couple things each week, again, just to keep it light. Your district by default blocks you from joining my Google Classroom. So most likely when you click on that link, it will tell you that you don't aren't allowed to join and so you would need to join with your personal account, your personal Gmail if you would like to do that. So if you wanna just highlight that, email it to your, your at gmail.com, your regular uh, personal one, you can join. Your school might have whitelisted my domain and you might be able to, um, Sarah, I can uh, meet with you afterwards. Um, I'm happy to answer questions at the end. And again, I'm sorry, I'm going so quickly. I've got 10 minutes, nine. The People tab is a great way to find out information about students. You go to the People tab and you click on one of the students' name and that is gonna open up Individual Student View. Individual Student View is essentially a progress report. You can control A, select all, and copy and paste that into a Google Doc and that gives the scores and the individual assignments and that's one of the ways that I'll communicate with parents is I make a Google Doc where I've copy and pasted from Individual Student View. 
Obviously parents don't have access to this unless they log in with their child, which I like. I prefer parents to look at grades with their child rather than by themselves where they email me something that I'm like, did you ask your kid to you talk to them first? Um, that would have been helpful. So either way. On the left-hand side of individual student view, you'll notice that there are filters. So you can click on missing to filter out just those missing assignments, highlight those, copy and paste them into an email, highlight them, copy and paste them into a Google Doc as one way to create a quick and dirty progress report or missing assignments report. Now missing means not turned in. So if you've given them a zero or a low score, it does not show up under missing. So do be aware of that. In the upper right hand corner of individual student view, did you notice that there is a mail icon? And what this mail icon lets you do is send parents a progress report. So you'll notice when it pops up, it defaults to student. Where this breaks down is if students don't have email, then this is not useful. You cannot send it to the student if they don't have email. It does not go to their drive, it goes to their email. When you do student and guardians, you can do guardians only or students and guardians, is again going to their email. So if you don't have the guardians on the people page, this won't work for you. So you have to make sure that you have email addresses, that they check those email addresses, and you will want to check the checkbox that says include student work summary. This is essentially exactly the same as copy and pasting the individual student view into a Google Doc or into an email, but this just does that for you where it sends that snapshot off to the student and or parent, and you can put a personal message in there. You can't change the subject line. It uses the same subject line every time. So if you do this twice and they're Gmail users, those do stack together like they're in the same thread. And also it does not go through your Gmail. So be aware if you wanna have some evidence that like, I sent you a progress report every week, it will not show up in your Gmail. So you will wanna keep your own documented log of that you used the send progress report, uh, the include student work summary, when you do that, because if you're in a parent meeting and they're like, I didn't get any of those, uh, there will be no evidence if you didn't log it. So just kind of heads up. Okay. All right. And I am probably alone in this. I love all the email that I get from Google. Uh, my Gmail is flooded in with all those uh, Google Classroom emails, but if you filter it, it's actually really great. My first rule is delete that stuff. Now, I want those emails. I want the emails, but I don't want to uh, have it just cluttering up my inbox. So I filter them, I put a label, which is a folder. Let me show you that. You wanna put it in the subject line and get that really specific wording from each of the emails. Like what kind of emails is Google Classroom pushing out? Because this gives me really great information to check, but I don't need to save them. So one of my tricks is I will say, okay, I've given everybody feedback on assignment number seven. So I type in hashtag 007 at the top of my Gmail. It comes up with all those Google Classroom assignments for assignment number seven. I select all and delete them all at once. You don't need to save them, but I do want them. It helps me to know if students have submitted something late. So I create a filter for each of the different types of emails that Google Classroom sends me. Now they are coming out with a daily summary. So you're not going to get 20 emails, you will get one um, that should hopefully be out for the fall. Okay, and so the question over here is there's no drop down menu choose between student and guardian. So if there's no drop down menu for student and guardian, it is because your district has disabled guardian. Um, yes, the guardian email thing is is disabled. So that's going to be at a district level. And so okay, so to add a guardian, you just go on to the people page. And if I back this up, does it show it? You see how it says invite guardians next, these are not real names. Next to Brad, it says invite guardians and you can enter their email address of the parent or guardian. And if one teacher does it, it's applied to the student's account. So if the first period teacher gets all the guardian emails in, the second, third, fourth, fifth period teacher won't have to do it. Next, if you're a first grade teacher, next year's second grade teacher won't have to put in those guardian emails because it is tied again to the student account. So that's really nice. So it does only have to be done once. Yeah, thanks for those questions. Okay, all right. So those are things you can do and some of them are great and some are like, ah, I wish it could be a little bit better. 
So I code for Google Classroom, different applications. I have a bunch of things that I have created. And I logged into schoolytics.io, and I would love it if you would click on that for me. If you would go to schoolytics.io, it's school and analytics together. I'm like, this is what I do. It's what I do, except I code in Google Apps Script. Apps Script's actually very slow to load. It loads up those, um, the data, which, Students have turned in work. It can literally take me two hours. And I log into schoolytics.io and it immediately gives me all of that information in seconds. And I'm like, this is all I wanted. No one loves a spreadsheet and data more than me. So I asked them, like, can I code for you guys? Like, I have all this stuff that I do. I just, I want it to be fast. So they have given me a coding job. So I am here today to ask you. What do you wish you could get? What kind of data? What kind of reports would you like? Because I want to make it for you. And so if you could fill out that Google form that I shared before and help me with what can I make for you? That's something that I am going to be working on. You'll notice when I log in that it gives me information on the date range. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to refresh. It gives me these nice charts. It's summer, so only 13% have completed this summer assignments and it is on this two week date range. So I can go through and like, no, 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 I want this to go all the way back to January or something. And those will adjust. These are my summer workshops. Um, so don't, don't worry about the data on that. I'm gonna come back to the slides. When you go to, I messed it up. When you are on that initial screen, you can log in in the upper right or you can choose to view demo. So let me, let me log out. Okay, and I'm going to go to schoolytics.io. You see on the left side here, it says live demo, and it does go to the admin demo. Uh, Schoolytics, like most things, is freemium. It's free for teachers. It's free for teachers. So if you'll just switch it, ooh, they put the parent view back in. Um, you'll just switch it to teacher view. You can see what kinds of things you can do with Schoolytics. It gives you a nice drill down of your classes, how much work is being completed. I can come over here and click on students. And again, it's on the date range. So you wanna adjust those. You can view some or all of your classes. You can create student groups. And one of my projects I'm working on is uh, signing group work. I, I am really wanting that. So hopefully that'll come really soon. And when you click on any student profile, you'll notice that it has the option here to create a progress report. It also has a missing assignments report. Yes, and I'm sorry. I am actually done. This is it. And so I just want to give you a chance to see what kind of information that you can get for free, that you can get a PDF. Oh, that should give you the option to go to a Google Doc. They just updated the interface, so some of the buttons are missing. Yeah. But it does export to a nice student progress report. No, it's they're updating the interface. This isn't what it's supposed to look like. So. Don't worry, give it a few more days. They are fixing that. Thanks everybody for coming. I'm just gonna real quick refresh and see if you, what kind of questions you had. I can't read that, I'm sorry. Um, a drop down tab for grading. Okay, I um, that I should be able to do, right? Teach interactively to, oh, whoever put this, you are speaking to my heart. We wanna be interactive. Actually, I have a whole book on teaching math with Google apps. And of course, I'm always doing workshops. Use Desmos, please. Please friends, if you're teaching math, use Desmos. Mm, I have to read this when it's not so large. Okay, oh yes, you know, giving everybody like five points at once. I've actually coded that into lskilo.com slash reuse GC. Reuse. GC and it automatically scores them for me so I don't have to put in the, the points. So that's definitely something I wanna work on for you. So thank you everybody. I'm gonna read through these, see which things that I can add in there. And if you wanna check Schoolytics out, I'm gonna try and get some of those features for you so you can have the best of both worlds because I, of course, am a big fan of using Google Classroom. Thanks everybody. Sorry, I talked a million miles a minute. If anybody wants to turn on their mic and just ask me a question, that would be fine. Thanks. 
Allison, uh, school lytics right now, and I joined in there, allowed to link up 10 Google Classrooms. Yes. Is that 10 like total that you get free or is that 10 at a time and then you can archive them and uh, then put new ones? Yeah, um, yes, that. Um, you know, it is a freemium version and you, allowing you to view the data of 10 active classrooms at a time hits most teachers. Uh, some schools have a block schedule where the teachers do an eight period day. It, it, it's not perfect. Um, but we do have a paid version. So it is going to be for any classes that you teach or co-teach. And then you get to choose those 10. So you just toggle them on. And then it's really easy. You just go to Schoolytics in the upper left-hand corner and go to courses or classes, go to classes. And that will allow you to switch. This is in the demo mode, so it doesn't show it there, but it says uh, manage, oh yeah, manage courses. And then you can switch which 10 it is. And you can do that as much as you want. So it's just kind of like the hassle of having to select these 10 and then these other 10, but that is a hack around so you don't have to pay for it because we don't want teachers to pay for it, obviously. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Hi, Alice, I have a kind of a random question. Okay, so I am a part of a homeschool charter. So we work with families ranging from kindergarten to 12th grade. And I really wanna use Google Classroom to collect work instead of through email. I just can't wrap my mind around. Well, first of all, um, you never collect stuff through email. That's gotta be one of the worst ways ever. So let's- Oh, I know, that's why I wanna use Google Classroom. Why, but why I, what's your challenge? I can't wrap my mind around because we work with a family, like a mom who has four kids. So she has a first grader, a third grader, and she's not gonna wanna sign in to all these different um, Google Classrooms. So I would like as a teacher to have one Google Classroom for all the kids on my roster. Sure, do that. How does that, how do I wrap my mind around that? You create a topic per grade level. And then when you assign to third grade, you just check box, these are my third graders and the topic is third grade. And then the only people that see those assignments are the third graders. So you would just, it, it defaults to all students on an assignment and you just click on that, deselect all and select who's getting that assignment. Okay. Does that make so sense? If a yeah, and so if a mom logs in, she's gonna see her third grade assignments and her the assignments for her fifth grader. Like, yes, um, yes. You see what I'm saying? No, because there's no parent portal. There's no parent portal for Google Classroom. Uh-huh. So there is no mom logs in that doesn't exist. I mean, when the, when the kid logs in, when she, looks, when she looks over the shoulder of her third grader who's logged in, they're going to see those third grade assignments. But for you, the teacher, it's easier for you to manage because you're just doing it all in one place. That's a suggestion. Um, is there any way for a parent to see all of their kids stuff in one place without switching no um but you know what this is a great question because we could do that in schoolytics i can't uh -huh. control what google does but i can control what schoolytics does so let me let me talk to them about what we could do because the um the parent portal is on is on the paid version Alice, I think that'd be interesting to answer. Sorry, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to end the session because I have to move on to the next session. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry about that. Thank you. All right, okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.